To be honest, I'm embarrassed to say I don't think I've read iRobot yet. I might have read it as a kid. I'm like trying to remember if I if I ever did. But I don't think it's I've read a whole me. lot of Asimov. It's what got me into the business. It was I was 15 in high school and I was reading iRobot at the time. I was reading everything Asimov wrote and Arthur C. Clarke and Ray Bradbury. They were my ABC. And uh so I was reading iRobot, and one of my classmates dropped a poster on my desk, uh, Metro Toronto Science Fair, enter the Metro Toronto Science Fair. And I said, yeah, maybe I'll build a robot and enter the science fair. <laughs> so that's how I got started. So I built my first robot when I was 15, which is now over 50 years ago. Nice. And entered it in the Metro Toronto Science Fair and did that for three years. What did you build? Like, what, what type of robot was it? Well, the first miserable thing I built was galvanized steel and a couple of wheels and a couple of cranes hanging from its arms and a little control panel. And it was terrible and uh, didn't quite work. And then the next year, I built a much better machine. It's about three and a half feet tall, a couple of arms on it, and wheels, and an ergonomic control panel, and uh, obstruction sensor. I made nice. an obstacle sensor out of a piece of PVC pipe, the parabolic reflector of a flashlight, a photo cell, and a transistor. And so it would see the reflection, and based on what angle it was at, would turn in the opposite direction. Oh, cool. So you could drive the thing up to a wall and it would turn away. But at the science fair, which was held at the Ontario Science Center, which was a big complex in Toronto, the science fair was held in a giant atrium of this place that had floor to ceiling windows that were 100 feet tall. It didn't work. Oh, <laughs> brutal. My sunlight. You got washed out. <laughs> but... But the judges appreciated it. So I got a couple of awards for that machine. 